وقولي محدثة بدعة وقولي بدعة ضلالة وقولي ضلالة في النار جزاكر الله خير for all of your brothers attendance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for being here and being part of the jama'ah and being part of seeking whatever little bit of knowledge we can share because for sure almost everyone in here probably has a bit more knowledge than myself I consider myself very undeserving of being able to sit before you but alhamdulillah this is the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given me the opportunity to speak to you tonight I'm going to take as much advantage as I can and uh, please forgive me if it takes my thoughts a little time to catch up uh, it is uh, 4.15 a.m. for me and this is normally when I would get up for Salat al-Fajr uh, the only difference is I have not been to sleep yet um, so inshallah we'll, we'll get going inshallah we're having trouble hearing? Let me, ah, there we go. Is that better? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I accepted Islam. I'm not going to tell you my long story about coming to Islam because I think I've told, there will be, what, the third time this week? Uh, third time this week. And it's all over the internet. You could see it anytime you want to. I think I would probably tell it better on the internet or some of the videos of the brother I made than I would at this point in time right now because I've been going nonstop since Saturday and uh, so what I want to do tonight, inshallah ta'ala, is just give you a brief summary of myself and then I want to give you a gift, inshallah. I came all the way from the United States and alhamdulillah to be able to give you a gift and I want to leave it with you tonight, inshallah. And if I have benefited nothing else from coming to city, Sydney, hopefully you will take this gift and accept it humbly from me. I accepted Islam in December of 1998 uh, when I was 18 years old. After a long search for the truth, uh, I was studying to become a Bible scholar and it was my actual study of the Bible and the biblical texts through textual criticism and the historical ana analysis of the Bible that led me to realize that the, the Bible was not the perfect evidence of God's religion. Uh, this was my thought process was that God was perfect, therefore his prophets should be perfect and the prophets of the Bible are far from perfect. Uh, his book should be perfect, the Bible is far from a perfect book, his religion should be perfect, and Christianity and its theology is far from perfect, it cannot be even explained uh, by anyone, trust me, I've, I've tried to have it explained to me many times, when I couldn't explain it to myself, uh, I think I spent, uh, Brother Ahmed, what was it, 45 minutes today trying to get a guy to explain it to me, he, he confused himself more than he confused anybody else, um, but I left Christianity and searched for other religions, didn't find them, and I left and got into the street life uh, and did all of that good stuff until finally one day I met a Muslim who happened to be a drug dealer um, who I'd known for a while. Uh, he sold drugs for a living, but he had enough of something inside of him to ask me to come to the masjid. Uh, and I went to the masjid, heard the message of Islam, read the Quran once from beginning to end, and that was it for me. I accepted Islam. Uh, alhamdulillah. The, the long story is a lot better, but uh, I'm not going to bore you two hours, inshallah. I want to take at least just an hour. The story is two hours, and I couldn't do it, and you couldn't do it. But to just give you a brief understanding of what happened to me and my idea, people always try to tell me, give me the short version. And I'm like, there's, a, there's, no, <laughs> there's no such thing as a short version, except for this. When I looked at the different religions of the world, they were like sitting cups of glasses of of milk in front of you. Here, on the head, like this, this better? Now I feel like I'm about to pilot a jet or something. <laughs> Fix it for me, yeah. This better? This better for everyone? Alhamdulillah. My look at searching through different religions was like you take a glass and fill each one of them with milk and all of them are sour except for one. Once you take a sip of the sour milk, how many more sips are you going to take before you realize it's sour? How many does it take? It takes one sip, right? You take one sip and you discard the glass, this milk is sour. I would take one sip of the world's religions and realize they were sour and toss them aside until finally I had a chance to drink from Al-Islam and that was the pure, uh, clean milk and once I drunk it, 
I knew right away this was it and, and I've been drinking to this day inshallah ta'ala and hopefully I will never quench my thirst but this was my journey to Islam was drinking all these cups and realizing that Islam was the only one that's pure but nevertheless I want to leave you with a different gift today inshallah ta'ala and that gift is the answer to one of the most famous du'as I've ever heard in the 13 years or almost 12 years that I've been a Muslim and I've heard this du'a all throughout the United States, I think I've been to every single city, major city in the United States of America, and the numerous different countries that I've been to throughout the UK and Europe and Egypt and Ireland and here now in Australia. I've heard this dua everywhere I've been. And I know that there are Muslims all over the world that make this dua begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this one certain thing. And since there were so many Muslims throughout the world, and are throughout the world, and especially during Ramadan, you hear this du'a a lot. Since there were so many Muslims making this du'a, I began to ask myself, if there are so many different types of Muslims making this du'a, the, the uh, well-to-do Muslim, the oppressed Muslim, the poor Muslim, the, uh, the, 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 the young, the old, the men, the women, all alike, from all over the globe are making this du'a, why is Allah not answering it? There has to be a reason. This is just logical. There has to be a reason Allah is not answering all of us together. Because this dua is very important. That's why so many people make it. And I think all of you heard this dua. It goes a little something like, Allahumma ansur islami wal muslimin. Or Allahumma ansur wa izz islami wal muslimin fi kuli makan yarham rahimin. Oh Allah, give help and dignity and honor to Islam and the Muslims in all places, Ya Allah. How many of you have heard this dua? All of you have heard this dua. How many of you have made this du'a? All of you have made this du'a. I think there's not a Muslim in the world that has not heard or made this du'a. So being such, and it is something that is really we are in need of. We're not asking just, just to recite poetry and rhetoric. We're asking this from Allah because we need it. We can look at the world today and realize that we are in, in serious need of the answer to this du'a. So the last time I was in Egypt, um, the Imam began to recite this dua in Fajr Salah over and over, this is it, he just kept saying Allahumma ansur wa izz islami wa muslimin and everybody behind him is crying I mean until all of us were in tears and then after the Salah something came, to, this came to my mind I asked Allah, I said Ya Allah what is it, if there are so many people making this sincere dua what is it that we are doing Allah that is preventing you from giving us the answer to this dua? Or what is it, Ya Allah, that we are not doing, that you want us to be doing, that is preventing us from getting the answer to this dua? I wanted to know. There has to be a reason that Allah is not answering this, this ummah's dua to give it the, the help and dignity that it needs and the help and dignity that Islam once had. And I was pondering this for quite a few days until me and uh, the Shaykh I was working with were reciting the Qur'an one morning. And we began to go through Surah Tusaf. We began to recite Surah Tusaf. And I had memorized this Surah. I know it. But when that morning, we started to recite Surah Tusaf, and we got to a certain verse, the light went off in my head. This is it. This is the answer that Allah is giving us. This is the reason why we are not getting the answer to this dua. And it was so simple that I literally wanted to go and start banging my head against the pillar in the masjid. I wanted to tell everybody, look, this dua, we can get it answered right now. Allah is giving us the formula for success and the answer to this dua right here in the Qur'an in one verse. With three things He's saying. And this is the gift I want to give you tonight, is the answer to this dua. If you really want it answered, if you say it from the depthness of your heart, that you really want Allah to give us this help, and this is that we deserve, then I'm going to give you the answer tonight.